Another American TESOL Presents Free Friday Webinars. I am your host, Shelly Sanchez Terrell, and we're here every week thanks to American TESOL. You can find the resources at americantesol.com uh, slash blogger, plus you can also find the slides, the video recordings, and you can also check out americantesol.com for our online and face-to-face -face certification courses. We have certifications in teaching um, TESOL Advanced, we also have teaching children, um, and then we also have an uh, integrating technology course as well. So today we're going to talk more about integrating technology, and we're going to talk about using photography in the classroom because um, our students, they love their mobile devices, and now it's easy to be able to visualize learning when your students do have a mobile device. Even if it's not a smartphone, they can use a digital camera or they can even use, uh, they can also use a mobile device camera or they can even use the, your camera that you pass around the classroom. So that's something to definitely consider. Even if you have one camera in the classroom, digital camera or your own camera or flip camera, or even um, sometimes we have disposable cameras, you can use that with your students. And definitely, as Peggy George says in the chat box, um, uh, photos do generate a lot of conversation. But one of the reasons why taking pictures is really great for students is because it really gets them to visualize their learning. For language learning, that's very important when your language learners are learning about vocabulary or they're learning about verbs or nouns or even adjectives. It, a picture can really paint so much. It can give so much meaning. Um, it can really help them with their vocabulary. But not only that, it can inspire them to write. It can be a way to, you can use it as a picture prompt. Um, you can also get students to be able to tell stories with their pictures. You can get them to be even like photojournalists. And the photojournalists, we look online and we see a lot of different powerful photos and they come with an article. So it can be a supplement to the writing as well. It can also be very powerful for teaching uh, CLIL, Content Language Integrated Learning, where students have to often study science or math or history. Um, saying the word fraction and seeing it in a word problem can be difficult for our students to process, but they can see a pizza or take a picture of a pizza and then two or three slices gone and they get the idea better. So definitely images and, and taking pictures is a powerful way to really bring about learning and for your students to be able to grasp some very difficult concepts. So there are a few ideas uh, for integrating photography ongoing as on, into your curriculum and how to um, make sure that it, it's a part of um, the curriculum regularly if you have um, at least one camera in the classroom. So one way is by your students creating a visual dictionary and that adds every time they learn new words, they can um, add a picture and contribute to it. Um, the visual dictionary you can make into a multimedia dictionary. If you put it online on a website or, um, you know, there are many curation tools like Pinterest. You can create a visual dictionary with Pinterest. You can create a visual dictionary with Google Slides. Um, you can always add also in um, like Edubuncy. Edubuncy is a great way to be able to um, add a visual dictionary and one of the ways you can do that is you can have where on Edubuncy you can add voice so you can have for example a and then you can have you know the different words with a and it will be there so there's definitely a lot that you can do with um, you know as far as many tools that you can use with make, creating a visual dictionary I used to do this with Flickr, but unfortunately, um, 
now I think it's a lot, it, it's easier to have spam and stuff and things you don't want on Flickr. So I don't do this so much anymore. But one of the reasons, and I used to also use a tool called Posturus, but unfortunately they have gotten rid of this tool. So um, that's why I no longer use those and recommend some others. When I was talking about EduBud, see if you want to see an example of a visual dictionary there, I can, I'm going to share with you a link in the chat box of different ways to use EduBuncy. And there is a free version for teachers. You can also have, as I was talking about digital stories, you can have your students create memes. They can also add to a blog their pictures and then they can uh, write what that picture means to them. You can have a magazine, a class magazine. You can use tools such as ESU. Um, there's also Flip Snack, and I'm writing these inside the chat box. Um, you can have a digital scrapbook. There are challenges. They can create their own online digital newspaper. Google Docs, Google Slides is great for those kind of projects. They even have templates. Um, if you look up Google templates, you can find different layouts and stuff that they have there. They can create advertisements, um, and that's a visual picture as well. So, and then of course they can use them in different presentations. So the pictures they take, you can encourage them to put them inside a presentation that they present, and then they can add the oral speaking component of that too. So one of the ideas is to have your students have, instead of homework, you can give them photo challenges are photo missions. Here's an example of a photo mission. Your students can snap a photo of graffiti they consider art, okay? And they have to give, so they can put this photo up if you have, for example, let's say you have an Instagram account, a class Instagram account, or let's say that you use Snapchat, or let's say you use Schoolology, or you use um, Edmodo. Your students can post that picture up and then they can put a short status update that discusses why they believe that photo of graffiti they, is art. They can talk about the color, they can talk about the lines, they can talk about the creativity, they can talk about the different elements, the use of space. So there's a lot that they can consider the shapes um, and then also the intelligence or, or the meaning behind the graffiti. So there's a lot that they can talk about just by snapping that photo of graffiti. If you wanted to make it into like a game, like a, a game, you get points and you get levels, then you can definitely add points or you can even add badges. So you can give them more points for doing things like, for example, if they use an app or a web tool that you like, or if they post it on their blog or they share it on a social network. Or if they put it in their own um, maybe book or something. Another idea, another um, example is of a photo challenge is to snap a photo that represents a fraction. And I talked about earlier them snapping a picture of a, of a pizza and how one of the slices or two of the slices are gone. And then the idea is with that picture, they create a word problem. So they're visualizing a word problem. So all, you can think of for your topic and your subject, what would be an appropriate photo challenge. But what you want to make sure is that your photo challenge or your photo mission has where your students take a picture of the learning and they accompany that with writing or with an audio sample. When you are teaching your students about taking pictures um, with their camera, it's good for them to review the camera settings so they can learn a lot about a vocabulary with the camera, but they can also learn how to take some really great pictures. And I think that's really important as well. So. If you look at the camera settings, there are different things that you can see. You can see where there's white balance, um, where they can they can change. Sometimes they can even change the color to where it looks like an old past photo from the past. 
Um, they can use filters. They can also look at recording audio. They can look at the length. They can also make the resolution, how fast they snap the photo, how quickly, how they can slow down this photo as well. And then they can try experimenting. So for example, they can try changing the settings in their camera when they're taking a picture of rain or maybe when they're taking a picture of uh, one of the stars at night. They can play around with the camera settings and see which is the best for those situations. And that is true. Um, as Peggy mentions in the chat box, there, the settings are getting more and more automatic with different smartphones. So it's a lot easier to do this with an older phone or even with a digital camera that still has where you can change uh, different aspects of it. <laughs> and definitely, if you use an app, teach them the pro um, what the app offers. So for example, if you use Instagram, you may want to go over the different filters. Your students, one lesson could be where your students take a picture and they have to use three different or four different filters and then they talk about the feelings behind those those different filters, like what that filter can really emote. So I think that that's um, a way to bring conversation too, because a photo can be an icebreaker. It can be a way that your students compare and contrast and also use vocabulary as well. There's a process when you are taking um, photos or, or when you're giving a lesson with uh, photos or a challenge. So first they have to capture whatever it is that your the mission is, whatever the challenge the mission is, and I'm using those interchangeably, but you can just call it one, we can say challenge. So let's say I send you on um, a photo challenge. And so I give you this challenge, you're going to take a picture of, um, I'm going to give you a word list. Let's say it's going to be adjectives. And I'm going to give you hard, soft, um, and, and some opposites there, OK? So your, your challenge is that you have to take pictures that represent both, OK, or the opposites. So the first step is you have to capture the learning. You have to, your students have to decide what it is they're going to take a picture of to represent hard and soft, okay? Um, so they might think, for example, they might do a rock and then they might do a fuzzy worm, okay? Let's say that that's hard and soft for them. So they decide what to capture and then they have to go back and edit. So they may want to put those pictures side by side, okay? So that would be the editing. They could use a program for that. They could use, you know, uh, where they can, like a photo collage program where they can put it side by side, do some kind of editing. They may want to put a filter just for the fun of it. They may want to, in some different apps, if you do use an app or you edit, you can um, really zoom in. Let's say that they took a picture and that, or even um, you can do that with the camera itself where let's say they took a far away picture of the worm because it was fuzzy and they didn't want to touch it. And so then they have to crop it. So that's the editing portion. And then there's that last step where they upload and they publish and then they do whatever else you ask them to do, whether it be that they add an audio to it that explains you know, why they took these, they made these choices or usually what I have them do, which is a lot simpler, is to have some supporting text with it. So when we are looking at having photos taken, um, I think this is a really fantastic, and you can find all of these, of course, on my pearl trees. Um, and then shellyterrell.com slash images, you can find all of these resources. But one is this really great infographic and what this infographic does is it shows you different um, different elements of taking a photo. So one of the first elements is composition. And it talks about lighting your subject wall. And, and it gives your students different things to play with. So it's something that you can walk 
your students through. But it's great to see an infographic. It talks about the outdoors versus indoor, taking a picture indoors versus taking a picture outdoors. Um, and it gives some other ways that your students can take interesting compositions. Now, this becomes especially important if you're doing an assignment like let's say that you're having them you want them to do a longer piece of writing let's say you want them to do like a photo essay and that is something that journalists do nowadays they take a series of shots and then they write an entire article that goes along with that you can find that in websites like cnn um and in some other sites that usually report the news, Newsweek, Time Magazine, they have spreads and then they have articles that go along with that. Or let's say that they're going to do an assignment where you have them take a series of shots for a travel magazine. Let's say, okay, you're going to do a piece on a great um, site for tourists to visit. And you have to write different facts about this site around the city. That could be a project. So that's when the composition becomes particularly important. Your students want to make sure they have a series of really good shots. And it's not, it's it's much different than having that shot where you had the photo challenge where they were taking a shot of a fraction and writing a word problem. Because this one, they're making a whole essay and they have an audience for it. So one of the things you can teach them is about is the rule of thirds. And this is actually a rule for professional photographers. But the great thing is if you look at the rule of thirds, it's also a way to teach them about symmetry, about balance. And also it's a way to teach them about things like focus. They can learn those words and also math. So what it is is, and you, it's great because on um, certain apps, especially like Instagram, it automatically puts, if you look at Instagram when you um, take a picture, you'll see that it gives you a grid. Now this grid is because of this rule of thirds. What the rule of thirds does is it really helps you to put whatever composition, whatever picture you're taking at the center of your picture. So this is actually a picture I took, some bridge somewhere I was exploring. And see how I'm I'm trying to put what the object that I'm focusing on becomes the main story. So this is what you're trying to teach your students, how to make sure that the object they're taking a picture of becomes the center of attraction. So the this is um, an important rule that professionals follow. And now when we look at, we can look at the technical aspects of their camera. So this infographic is really great because it talks about your mobile camera and things that you can do. Um, and also it also gives you some best practices and tips. So this is a way to walk your students through all of these tips if you think that that's important. And here, this is really great. They talk about ways to really keep your camera now, if you have a class set of cameras or it's a, a camera you lend them, then it's really amazing, um, this infographic, because it tells the students how to take care of that device. So here it says, make sure to keep your lens clean. It gives them some um, different ideas. It tells them to experiment, experiment with white balance. I remember when I was in a summer camp and we were doing this uh, for a science course, we would actually get the filters and candies. So sometimes you get those candies and they have those colored filters where it's see-through. And what we would do is, this was before uh, digital camera days, um, is we would put those filters over the lens, like a red one, and it was crumpled, and it would make a nice effect, much like the filters you see nowadays. So we could put different colored ones um, if you put see-through tissue, if you put see-through, it's like, um, uh, I forgot what it's called. It's like a, a, a plastic wrap, but it's colored. If you put any of those, those make some very cool filters as well. You can make special effects that way as well. So that's what it's trying to tell your students. It, it gets them to experiment. Um, it's like the candy wrapper. It's like that um, cellophane cellophane. 
Nutella. <laughs> That's called something like that. And then it talks about practicing, you know, uh, different ways to upload the pictures on the camera and also to take a look at the same uh, the same again and again. So um, uh, the same photos and how to filter and edit. And it gives advice about that as well. So let's look a little bit more at editing because your students love editing. They, your students really enjoy using filters. And it's really great because now some of the photo apps out there are really have really great special effects. So for, not only do they have special effects for photos, but also for creating short videos. Now, one of the great things is like Instagram has these stories where they'll take a little bit of video, a little bit of pictures, and they'll mix them together, and it gives your story for the day. So what one idea is that you can have where your students are creating a story of what happened in class throughout the day. So each day you get a different student who in charge and they get to be um, the camera person and the one who shares or blogs about what you did in your class that day. You can give them different rules like you can say don't take anyone's picture if you're not allowed to take the other students pictures. Take pictures of the projects and then they have to type with each picture or each uh, video they have to describe what's happening. Today we are making robots, or today we're making, uh, we're writing these letters, and then they take a picture of the letters and the writing, and they say, oh, he, and they interview the different students, and they say, okay, this is Bobby, and Bobby is taking, um, is writing a letter to his, to his grandfather, and here's um, Susanna. And Susanna is writing a letter to her mother. And so you're documenting what happened within the day. And every single day, your students are doing this. And then they can post them to your class Instagram account or your class blog. And that's a, a way that each of your students gets to, to tell a story of what's happening in your class. And it's also a great way for your parents, the parents that are looking to constantly see all the great work you're doing within the classroom. So I used to keep a wiki page up for the parents, and the parents loved this. They really thought that this was a great way to, to see what was happening. And one of the, the, it might be a little scary to put things online and share with parents, but the parents, their feedback was, and the, this was even when I was teaching four-year-olds, and um, that young and putting some of the work online is the parents said, I really think that you care about our kids because we can see everything that you do in class. So that was really, really rewarding for me. Be Funky is another really great uh, app that's out there. I, I think you can use it in the web as well. And Be Funky allows you to do, you can zoom in, you can add um, different filters, you can add text, so you can put a story on the picture. Let's say that you don't have a site. Let's say you don't have, you just want your students to turn in pictures somewhere. Well, they can do that and they can create the story on the actual photo. Or let's say that you're doing, for example, an advertisement or something like that, or a photo prompt, an image prompt, and you want to put the prompt on the bottom of the picture, you can do that. PicMonkey.com, now this is not a mobile app, but it has some really awesome features. Um, you can do this online on the web. It allows you to crop, it gives you different filters. Um, it, it makes it really simple to resize an image. And so this was an actual image I took. And then often I use PicMonkey to be able to go back and resize images. If you're getting your students to create, for example, let's say they want to make a header for their blog, or let's say they want to make a header for, um, let's say they're going to make a header for their Facebook, or they're going to make a header for their different social media, they can, or they're going to make like an advertisement or something, they can use PicMonkey. PicMonkey even has a photo collage option, it has frames. They can use Canva as well. Canva is a really great photo tool, but um, I also like PicMonkey as well. 
So there's tons and tons of great apps like this. Um, there's a whole list that I have here, and you don't have to worry about necessarily copying all of these because you can always go to this presentation and you can download it and get the PDF. In fact, I've put the links here so that way you'll be able to take see the, this particular slide there so you don't have to write all this down. But those are some great free apps for teachers if you do have apps you can work with. And they're for Android and they're for iOS as well and uh, Windows Phone as well. So Be Funky is one of those and Instagram. I like to share those um, and then Pick Monkey is online. So let's look at some more project ideas. One idea is for your students to make a brochure, a flyer, a poster or commercial with a series of their shots. Let's say they go on a field trip and if they go on this field trip, you may want them to make a brochure highlighting one of the exhibits, okay? So that could be a project. Or let's say that they go to the zoo, they could do the same. Let's say they go to a museum, they could do the same. Or you could just give them that as an assignment. If there's a lot of local places and you think your students would be able to go, you can even give them a week to get this photo challenge accomplished or this photo project accomplished. Or you could just tell them, okay, we're gonna do brochures about great places around our city. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take a picture of um, your favorite place in the city and make a brochure or flyer or poster or commercial about it. Another idea is to tell them to pretend they're selling their home, okay, their house, and they have to take pictures and kind of make it like their house is on the market. Like what are the great things about the place they live or their apartment or their house? They could do their clothes. They could say that, you know, um, they're, they're trying to market their clothes and they're putting this in a brochure. They're having, um, here in America, we have something called a garage sale or yard sale. And let's say that they're trying to, you know, or so there's so many different ideas that you can have. They could do it of their pet, you know, that they're trying to make a flyer or poster about um, their pet and, and doing, a, you know, different shots of their pet or something like that as well. Or their favorite restaurant and they're making a flyer or brochure or poster commercial about their flyer, um, about their favorite restaurant. When they do this, um, they can also make slideshows, okay? They can make uh, wonderful slideshows that they can, uh, coming soon is Christmas, Thanksgiving. They want to make a slideshow to really thank their parents, show appreciation to their friends, or make a slideshow as a greeting to different friends and family members and show memories and stuff. They can make a really great, beautiful slideshow um, that's a video slash slideshow with effects, with filters, and it's free with Kazoa.com. Kazoa.com is a great tool for making very uh, incredible, wonderful um, slideshows, videos, and also collages. Um, so you may want to try that one. They can create a digital scrapbook. They can, um, for example, you can make a scientific element out of it where they have to take pictures of leaves or flowers or trees and they identify what those objects are. Rock collection, they can take a picture of different rocks and then let you, you know, classify them as granite, marble, you know, any of the rocks that are there. They could do bug identification where they take a bunch of pictures of different bugs around and they identify them, put the traits, what are the characteristics, you know, what, what does this bug do, what is it known for? Uh, plant identification as well. Where does it grow? What does it need to grow? Is it better in light? Is it better? What season does it grow? And so you can make it to where they're learning English or they're learning math or science and they're also creating this digital scrapbook. Bitesite.com is really good for this. You can do a lot of different things with Bitesite. You can embed video. You can have labels. You can see how it's really, really nice here. The other one that I really like a lot actually is and has gotten so much better is EduGlogster. And that's a free app. Now, Byteslide isn't an app. Byteslide is only on the web. It is free. 
Edu Glockster is on an iPad, a free iPad app, and then Edu Glockster is also on your um, is also on the web, and it has gone so much better. Some of the projects I've seen on there, especially the digital collages, are amazing. They will blow your mind, and students love it as well. Character scrapbooks where they take a character, they can even draw the character of whoever they're reading, and then they make a scrapbook as if they're pretending that character lived today. So, for example, let's say they take um, uh, Juliet from Shakespeare, and then they have to make like a yearbook or a scrapbook of her life today. What would it be like? You know, what would where would she go visit? You know, what, and so they can make a scrapbook of that as well with any of the tools I showed you, including Edu Glockster, which is really awesome. A good example, a way to kind of introduce this activity of a digital scrapbook of a character is to look at one by Scholastic.com. So Scholastic.com has a series called Dear America, and it's about um, the pioneers and also the Native Americans. And so they have an actual digital scrapbook of Patience Whipple. Patience Whipple was a pioneer. She's about 13 years old, I believe. And it, it has different digital photos, games, recipes she likes, and quizzes, and also um, little moments. So it's like an online blog of her. And then your students, the idea is when they look at this, they can come and they can try to use like Canva, Edubuncy, they can use um Kazoa, any of those that are Edu Glockster, Bite Slides, they can use any of those tools to create their own scrapbook of a character, either from the past or from a book that they're reading. So Edu Buncy, I already talked about and talked about all the great things that you could do with it. You don't only have one slide, you can have more than one slide. They can also create a digital story. So here, this is me, and this is um, Juliana. Juliana was a girl that I taught in Brazil, and Juliana actually made this book for me. So she, you can see where she put pictures of us together, and then she wrote a bit of text to go with that. We use something called Booker, or it's at pimpom.net, um, and it's a Flickr tool. Um, but it, it's a really great Flickr tool where you just simply add a picture and then you add text. So it's very, very simple. <laughs> the Book Creator app, um, that is if you use a mobile device, you, you might want to try this. It's really, really great. You can get it at uh, redjumper.net, but it for iOS devices and also Android. You can have your students retell stories with their images. They can use Yakit for Kids or Telegami. Both allow you to upload your own images and to do funny things like put talking mouth. Or in this one, you can get an avatar to talk about your photo. You can do selfie adventures, and uh, Peggy George mentioned that earlier. I have a lesson if you go to teacherybootcamp.com slash back to school selfies. I have a whole entire template that you can download and that students just fill out with a selfie with their friend, a selfie at a famous landmark, um, a selfie that shows a different perspective with their pet or with a favorite book, with their hero, um, and you can tailor it to your classroom as well. A great selfie app is the Cami app. The Cami app allows you to just raise your hand and then it'll automatically take a picture. You, once your mobile device sees that, then it'll automatically take a picture. You don't have to be near your mobile device. I mean, you, they, it has to see your hand, but you don't have to push a button. So it's very cool. And these are all free, by the way. These are all free apps. It also allows you to, to put like a costume, like make yourself into a lion and some different things like that. So it's very fun. Kids love it. Students can upload pictures and create comics with those pictures. There's Flickster, I mean, Friendstrip, and then there's Comics Head, and both allow you to put your own picture up and to create a little comic with it. There's BigHugeLabs.com that has tons of things you can do with your photos. Anything from creating a calendar, your students can create a calendar that could be a nice 
nice gift for the holidays for December when that comes around. They can make a jigsaw puzzle with their pictures. They can make a pop art poster. So there's so many things they can do. But one of my favorites is making, of course, a motivational poster. And so I've done that or demotivational poster with Roscoe the Pug. There's a lot of um, ones that I make for him, but your students will have fun making these motivational posters as well. You can upload photos and to a mind map as well. So whenever you do have a mind map, encourage your students to take their own photos and to really represent the different concepts with that. My favorite is Poplet. Um, that's what I use. Usually with a mobile device, we use Poplet and then we take pictures and add it as a mind map. You can add funny little mouse and stuff to your pictures on the web. And really, a lot of students love this with Blabberize. And what it does is it takes your photo, you add a mouth, and then you add the voice. And then you can add that audio bit. So it's not only the visual, but it's the audio. It makes your pictures talk. What I've done in the past is had my students draw and then bring their drawings to life and give it a voice. They put the mouth on and then their drawing can talk and they love it. Photophonia has a lot. It's on the web, but it's also a free iOS and Android app. And it makes your pictures look like it's in a gallery or a billboard and it has or a painting. So it's really great for making um, pictures of the past or making it look like it's inside a gallery and also having writing prompts so it's just really really cool um there's frame artists for making a newspaper or magazine or sending postcards so you can have the pictures turn into postcards you can see how all of these are really inexpensive ways to make great gifts for families and friends and grandparents and you know sending something digitally nowadays is a lot less of a mess because um Sometimes when you have a project where they're making a newspaper or a magazine or where they're making, um, for example, a scrapbook, they want to use glitter, they want to use stickers, and all of that gets very expensive. It can get destroyed quite easily. It's hard to keep it over time. So years might go by, and you'll notice that a lot of your digital scrapbooks, the, the color fades inside the... Um, the color might fade from the photos. And so doing things digitally is really great because you can preserve that for a very, very long time. You can create interactive image posters with Bing Link. I think we're coming to an end soon, which I know there's tons and tons of apps. I just want to show you everything. You can make them into um, memes. You can make them into image chef, allows you to do really cool things, filters. Once again, you can do your own um, you can do your own writing prompts with with Image Chef. You can add you can even create word um, word clouds with it. So there's so much you can do. And one of the coolest things that you can do now, if you're feel like you're more advanced and you've already used a lot of technology and you want to try something that's super super techno guru you can have your students try and create a 360 degree image, a virtual image and upload it for free on Google Street View. Or they can use the roundme.com app. So you can have your students create virtual reality photos or 360 photos where it turns into virtual reality. And they can do cool things with that. Um, so. That's a really nice idea and something new you can try ev eventually, you know, when you feel like, okay, I've done so many cool projects, let's try doing this. That's kind of technical. But roundme.com is a really fantastic app that you really need to try if you do like virtual reality and you want to do something very cool with it, like create a lesson and things like that. Um, and then finally, you know, um, my partner, <laughs> Jake uh, Duncan, uh, has his own Instagram account, and he does the documenting of different types of um, projects and stuff that they do in the classroom. He'll put often, like here, he has a little Minecraft head to um, make sure that the kids, you know, they're not, their faces aren't always shown if 
parents don't allow it. But he's documenting what's happening, their projects, what they're doing. And the parents really, really appreciate it. Uh, one time he was documenting when we went on a trip to D.C. Um, for an award I was getting. And his students got to go along with us through that trip. He took pictures of what was happening outside the plane. He took a picture of when we were in the air and you can see all the landscape. So your students, when you get to go to conferences or trips or anything like that, then they're taking a virtual trip with you. And for many of his students that never get to leave this small town, it really encouraged them to ask questions. And they were asking him questions back and forth. And the parents were really excited as well. And so it was it was a really great event uh, for the kids to be able to see that. So th this is a way that your students really get interested and they ask questions and also they're learning about an area geography or something they're doing and also the parents can really see what you're doing now i recommend that you would if you do get a class account an instagram uh class account that you just let your students like i said have one be a reporter each day or each one a week a different one or you can have two or three someone who takes pictures someone who does the status updates someone who takes video I mean, you can do it any way you want. And that's it. So if you want to hear, uh, find the resources, you can go to shellytarot.com uh, slash images, and you can find the slides. You can download them for free. You can also find a lot of these apps. You can find bookmarks, and you can find a lot more project ideas and how to use photos with your students. So thank you so much for coming today, and we will see you next.